Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday, brought to you by Idaho Public Television and Montana PBS. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. We're back to talk about uh, digital tools that are interactive and provide students with lots of fun, hands-on, collaborative experiences. Our last episode, we were talking about Google tools and all of the ways Google can be used. But there are also some really fun tools out there for getting kids interacting and collaborating that aren't in the Google domain. So those are the tools Carrie and I are going to share this afternoon. Um, she'll share a couple and I'll share a couple. So Carrie, do you want to go first? Sure. And let me just just give you this caveat that there are like a billion tools out there, but Nikki and I just chose some of our favorites from when we were in the classroom and some that we use frequently and that we still feel like um, are really great tools. So just know that, that this is not all that there is. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Give me just a second. Um, and start out with one of my favorites, which is Kahoot. If you have not heard of this, so can you see my screen, Nikki? Yes, I can. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so if you've not heard of Kahoot, you've been missing out. So I taught fifth grade, my kids loved Kahoot. In fact, they would beg me to play Kahoot. Um, like whenever we had inside recess or, you know, sometimes just to get out of doing their lesson. So this is the just the home page and um, there's a lot, but I'm going to tell you that there are four different levels of accounts you can get as with a lot of things that you're probably used to and Nikki and I just were looking through all of the levels and so when you get ready to um, to sign up, if you Oh, mine automatically went to login because I already have an account. But if you don't have one, there will be a little sign up button. Um, and it will have the different options. There are some paid versions. I'll tell you though that I used this in my class for probably three or four years and I never needed the, um, the paid version. I always was able to do everything I wanted to do with the free version. So it really depends on what you wanna do, but I felt like, I had enough flexibility to do it. And so this is basically, you know, your homepage. What I love about this is you can create your own cahoots if you want, or um, there are a ton now. When I, I first started using this, I heard about it at a tech conference several years ago and loved it. Um, but I was cahooting when Kahoot wasn't cool, you know? And so there was not a library of um, other ones. I had to create everything on my own. Now, thankfully, if you click at the top here, there's a library and you can search by keyword. Um, and so if you're looking for something specific, the cool thing about this is that, um, you, I'm sorry, that you go under the discover is where you want to look. Sorry, library is your cahoots. The discover right here, look at this. There's Disney stuff. We were just talking about this yesterday. They partnered with Star Wars and Marvel. So there's a ton of, um, of choices. There's also just cahoots that educators create and then they can allow other people to publish. You can filter obviously by, or you can search by keyword or by, um, content area up here. And so if I, before you create a Kahoot, I would search for one because I can almost promise you that there is one available. Um, so if I want, I taught fifth grade. And so if I wanted states and capitals, because kids had to know that, um, look at this. It already comes up with a whole bunch of resources. And the cool thing about um, most of these, obviously at a glance, it tells you how many questions that is. Um, but you can usually, now this depends on the permission that the, the person who created it gives you, but I have found very few that did not give the permission for me to edit it. So if there aren't a couple, if there are a couple questions you don't like, or you wanted to change the pictures, um, you can edit, you can make a few small edits and then you can basically create this and save it to your own library. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to do all of it on your own. You can search 
for and the, the last few years that I used it, um, I very rarely created my own because um, I could always almost always find what I wanted. But let me just show you a couple of these. Um, and so basically, this is my library now. This is the one that I restarted after I worked at Idaho Public Television. This is not my classroom one, um, but I did one for PBS Learning Media for some teachers. So the idea behind it is that you create the questions. Um, you can insert videos, you can insert pictures, things like that. And then you play as a class. And this is what my students always really loved. I mean, you can play a couple of different ways. If you have shared devices, you can play as a team. If your kids have one-to-one -one devices, then they can individually play. I'm just gonna hit play. Um, and so when you hit play, it comes up with this, um, these options for ways you can play it. And it tells you that you can play the game together with learners in a class, or you can assign it and they could play it at home on their own. So this is even a great distance learning um, resource you could use. I always, we, in my class, we mostly did them live. Um, and so again, here, this is where you have the choice to do player versus player. So if you have one-to-one -one devices, you would use that. Uh, if you don't, then you would have teams that could play together if you're sharing. And then there's a whole bunch of options that you can choose. Um, you can randomize the questions and all of those things. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all those, but I just want to play the classic. I just want to show you what one looks like. So as your kids are joining, it tells them right there what to do. They would go to kahoot.it and they would insert this number. And then as they join, it asks them to put their name up. And so as they join this game, their name will start appearing here. Um, hey, Nikki, will you join this so that um, we can see what it looks like? And then, so I always had to have a conversation with my kids about put your real name, not like, you know, dummy or something, because they, you know, fifth graders would always <laughs> inevitably try to put something not appropriate. But the beauty of this, though, is that you can remove it. So if that, that one funny kid does put, you know, stupid face or something, because, um, they, uh, so there's Nikki. Uh, if she had decided to put something um, like stupid face, um, I could just click on it and it would remove. It. And so I always told my students, if I have to remove you, then you're removed. Like you don't get to play this game later and I'll take them out. So anyway, the kids' names will pop up here as, um, as they sign in. You hit start. And then this is what they will see on the screen. So you would project this in front of them. Um, and then on their device, it's showing them these exact answers and they choose the one that they think is the right answer. And, um, and then at the end, what I love about it also is then it gives you the instant feedback as well. Now you can turn that on or off. You can change the length of time you give each question. You can change all of that stuff when you're setting it up in that original um, location. And so you go to the next question, you just go through. The kids love to see it. It clearly does not give any data. It doesn't tell who got it wrong, just how many answered each of those questions. Um, and then kind of ranks them and puts them in a, you know, like, yeah, you know, you're getting first place. It gives them so many um, points and things like that. So that's a really quick crash course for Kahoot. What I love about it is that they have to be both engaging in the screen because this, it's on the question and then looking at their device. So their head isn't in their device the whole time because they have to be kind of looking back and forth. Um, and then, you know, it gives them the instant feedback and it's simple. But the kids, like I said, they love it. And I have done this um, to review at the end of chapters. I did it sometimes for a Christmas party, like all games, all the Christmas game, um, Christmas trivia kind of stuff that didn't mean anything. Um, you can end the game at any point and 
um, it it would normally put up, you know, who the who the winners were. We only had one, so Nikki um, got eight hundred and thirty-seven. Nikki got first place. Good job, Nikki. The only uh, time I've ever won a <laughs> Uh So first place there, um, but you can you can change all of the settings for this. So again, that was a really quick um, crash course, but I I love this. My my students loved it. Um, it was always just. It's so much fun and they loved to, the competition. We did it um, for all kinds of things. So there's a million other things about Kahoot. I hope you'll go in and play with it and explore. It's just like I said, one, uh, this is just a crash course. It's one, one um, fun collaborative thing. I really liked the playing in teams also. So if you're wanting to get kids collaborating, obviously, player versus player is probably not the best way to do that because they're not going to want to talk to each other um, because they're competing. But when you put them in teams, then they have to talk about that answer and decide as a team um, what the answer is. And so I liked to play the team version, even though my kids had their own devices, um, had one-to-one -one devices, because then that is where that piece for the collaboration really came in. Now, I also did have, see some collaboration at the end when they would see the answers and they would say, you guys, it couldn't be this because of this. And they would talk about um, why that was the right answer. But the collaboration really mostly came in with um, the team one. And then you'll see that at the end, you can print off a report as well. And it will tell you what each individual student answered um, so that you have data if you want it for reporting or whatever. So I love Kahoot. If you don't know of it, go check it out, kahoot.com. And then you can, it's free to sign up. And I would recommend um, sign up for the free one, play it, use it, explore. If you decide that you need the other features, you can always upgrade here at any time. Uh, but like I said, I rarely ever um, used Oh, I look, this is my school one. Oh, sorry. I was just having good memories from a moment of um, McBroom the Rainmaker story that we used to read. Anywho, uh, so you can always upgrade later if you want to do that. So that's Kahoot. Let me close out of those. And then I will show you my next almost probably one of my most favorite collaborative tools, which is Flipgrid. And um, so if you do, again, flipgrid.com, it'll bring you to where you can log in or sign up. Um, it does have single sign-on with Google and with Microsoft. So if you don't have to remember another username and password, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. But you also see right here where it says, have a group code to join. Um, that's where students could join, but I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute or could join your, your Flipgrid. So Flipgrid, so I signed in here and this, these are my grids or my um, video responses that I've used. And let me just show you, um, I want to show you a non-student one. So here's an adult one. <laughs> um, and this was for a book study that I did this past summer. And so what you can do is, as the teacher is, you'll see here that it says to share one aha moment from, from module four. We read this book together and then they were supposed to get on and share an aha moment. And you'll see that here there's individual responses. It asks for their first name and last initial. And then um, you'll notice that there's comments and other things on. So what the kids do is they get in and create a video um, response to this. So mine was share one aha moment. So all of these are moments that they shared with me from this. And adults don't typically love this so much because adults don't always love to see themselves on camera, but kids do. They love it. 
they think it's awesome to be able to like look into the camera and record and see their own video and you know kids typically think it's really great um let me show you let me show you what it looks like from the creation side and so um if i wanted to create a flipgrid um i would just click on um add a topic here and i'm just going to call this test right but you can call it whatever you want you can put it in a description again you can add an image you can add a video um you can do bitmojis and stickers there's all kinds of things that you can upload here and then i also love this you can choose the recording time so you know that kid that's going to talk for five minutes if you give him a camera right this teaches them to have to get their point across in a succinctly and in a certain amount of time. So a minute 30 is usually pretty good. It depends on the topic. I think you can go, yeah, oh, now it goes up to 10 minutes. Look at that, they added 10 minutes. So they can record up to a 10 minute video. Um, minute 30 is usually the default. And so if you don't ever change it, it'll give them a minute, 30 seconds, but you can give them as little as 15 seconds to create it. And what that does is it just cuts them off when it's over. And sometimes that resulted in some frustration for some of my students, but it was really good practice for them to have to be able to figure out how to, like I said, really succinctly make their make their point and share with me what they wanted. And so sometimes they had to do two or three takes because um, it might take them a minute. Um, and then you have control over a bunch of things. Um, you can make this topic active right now, or if you're scheduling ahead and you don't want this topic to show up yet, maybe you don't want it to show up and, you know, it's Thanksgiving break and you have some time to work, but you don't want it to show up till January. You can schedule those out and then they'll pop up in the grid that your students see on the date that you save. You can turn off or on the ability for the students to comment on each other's and you can choose which way they do that. So one of the things that I love is that students can then create a video response back to that person. So I can do my response and then Nikki could go in and do a comment for me also in a video. And so it's kind of can be, it almost feels like this back and forth a little bit. But if that worries you or if you're having problems with kids, you can turn that on or off. So you can allow them to do video. They can also do text comments. So that looks like anything you would be used to seeing on Facebook or anywhere else, right? Where they just type in the comment. Or you can turn it off entirely if you don't want them to be able to make comments on um, people's, on other people's um, videos. And then you can also turn it on where you moderate all of it. So before your kid, before the video publishes, it comes to you and you can look at it and see. And it would be the same thing with comments where you have to approve each response. So it really depends on what you need in your classroom, but all of those things can be turned on and off. Um, and then again, here you can allow, do you want to allow them to attach things? Do you want to allow them to like videos? All of those kinds of things you have control over. When you have all of that said how you want it. Um, oh, I do love this guest password one. Let me just tell you that. This is for, so you set up, um, your whole class will have a code. You can set up a class every year. They'll have a code and be able, if you want them to, and be able to see every topic that you have. But if you want an individual family or parent, or maybe your principal, maybe your co-teacher, you want them to have access to, um, that then you can add um, a guest password here and then they could come in and see just this topic they wouldn't see your whole class they would just see the student responses on this topic um, now doing it here would allow if I, if you gave me a guest password i could see all of the kids responses on this topic i'm going to show you how you can do just individual kids um, but when you have this set how you want you just hit post uh oh have to put in a description sorry and i have to choose which class so remember i told you you could set up classes so that if you teach different sections or you have different um, classes you want to teach i'm going to just choose iPhone public television for right now you post it to that and then it automatically gives you this link this is the link that you would share with your students 
so that they can then get in and leave a video response. And you'll see that there are multiple ways you can do that. You can do it with a QR code. Um, there's a right here to Google Classroom. So it'll automatically put this into Google Classroom. Your kids just link right out to it. Um, obviously there's an embed code, there's a Teams, um, or you can just copy and paste this, this as well. So however you choose to share that with your students, sometimes if I was giving them time in class, um, I would just put up on the board, the big flip code, this CFF1059A, I would just write that on the board. Then they could go to flipgrid.com and type that in. So there's a bunch of ways you can share this with your students. I would say all set. And then you'll see here again um, is my join code if I need that for later. Obviously, this doesn't have any in it, but you can see that now that is added to my class. So from here, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Um, this one thing that I really loved about this is that in addition to, um, I want to go back to that startup teacher one right here. In addition to being able to give a group password, each individual response creates its own um, link. And so if you, um, oops, oh no, I did not mean to do that. Okay, you're going to have to pause this or you're going to have to cut this part out, Nikki, because where is the flip code? Oh, right there. Okay. Okay, edit this part. Okay, so um, each individual student also creates its own shareable link. And what I love about that is that that's where you share with parents because they would only see their student. If you do it at the topic level where I was showing you earlier, that gives me access to all of these. And you wouldn't obviously want to share that with a parent because then they could see every student's um, responses. But for example, with Grace, if I wanted to just share only hers, there's the, this little share button here and it pops up again. And this is a unique share code for her, only her response. So I love this. I used this um, a couple of different times at parent teacher conferences where I had had kids um, create these. And then as parents were sitting waiting for me, I had their student name up um, with, and I had sent them a code and they could, could scan it and watch their kids little video while they sat and waited for me to do, um, you know, to meet with their kid. I've also done it where I've had them, um, I, you know, I've just emailed this home to the parents and said, this is a great response from your child. I thought you might want to see it. So again, there's this, all the same options here to share this, but you can, but it shares the individual um, video, which I thought was great. And then you can obviously edit these, you can hide them, um, you can, can change anything that you want with it. You can download it if you're gonna, if you need to share it to somebody in a different way than um, via the cloud. So there's just a bunch of a bunch of things you can do um, within this. And again, this is just a quick overview. At the end of the thing, it asks them to take a selfie, and there's stickers they can put on their selfie, and that's what it uses as the cover image for this video. And so. Again, this is a really great collaborative tool. It was fun to do it with our book study this summer uh, because we were all virtual. And so we didn't know each other. We didn't see each other in person. And so it was fun to see them on video and then be able to respond back if I wanted on video or just make a comment. Um, and you see that there's this print QR codes right here. I love this as well. And like I said, I've done this, but now here's, the QR codes, if you wanted to hang them around your room or you wanted to print it for parents or use it at conferences, it has each individual student and the QR code just to their video. So, okay, I talked a lot, but this is a pretty, um, I love Flipgrid and again, just the tip of the iceberg here, um, but I just, Kids love it. I love it. I um, teachers usually love it because it's a fun way for them to be able to get in and and make you know interact with their kids in a different way as well. So I really recommend. Um, and you know, anytime we can get kids talking is a good thing. They're speaking and listening skills, and so anytime we can get them talking and thinking about what they say, and that was always a really good thing for them too, 
that I had that I you know it's good for them to hear themselves talk and see themselves and and ex voice and expression and tone and things like that so I love Flipgrid and so check it out if you're not if you haven't joined this is flipgrid.com and um you I promise you'll love it